Today we're going to be taking a look at saltwater taffy, one of the distress oxide colours. This is a video series where we're looking at all the different distress oxides in alphabetical order. There's 71 at the moment, um, so lots to get through. We are already into the S's, so we really are thundering through these. Hopefully you've learned lots of combinations already and lots of different tips and techniques for your distress oxide and ink blending. So everything I'm using in the video today is linked down below. That includes the ink pads, the brushes, the blending mats that I use, and of course the color chart as well, which is free for you to download from my blog. So the first thing we always do is take a look at this color when it's swatched onto some smooth white cardstock, which again is linked down below. It's the uh, Creative Craft Products stamping cardstock. Um, so we will blend this and see what it looks like on its own. Then we will uh, compare it to other colours in the range and then we'll create two brand new colour combinations for you to try at home. So there is Saltwater Taffy. It's a pale pink borderline a coral. It's got an orange base to it. I think the label has more orange and is a little bit paler in there it's not too dissimilar though it's not so much that you need to be aware of this when you're looking online or purchasing in a shop um, but definitely more of a pink than a coral i think that's my opinion so uh, let's take a look and see against other pinks that are in the range so let's take the first page off of this and like i say this is a um, color chart that you can download at home for free um, just print it off and then you add your color swatches to it as and when you purchase your distress inks or distress oxides you can have one chart for each inks and oxides if you like is a great way of seeing what you've already got and what you still need so here we've got saltwater taffy at the bottom we've got abandoned coral just above that that is darker but then we go a little bit lighter back into worn lipstick and I think this isn't actually too dissimilar. So the two now, uh, abandoned. Uh, sorry, saltwater taffy does have a little more orange to it, and worn lipstick is a little more pink. But I don't think the difference is really that much. So. If you are thinking about keeping your uh, Distress Ink and Oxide stash as low as possible, obviously everyone's got a budget, um, I would say you could probably use these two um, in place of each other if you have one and not the other for now. Of course we all want to build up our entire stash and I'm sure you will do eventually, um, but there's a little tip for you. I know that there's nothing else in the range uh, in this sort of colourway that's going to be comparable. I'm going to turn this over because the colour combination that I'm going to do first for you is a tonal one which means I'm sticking with the colour uh, that we've got and I'm going darker and lighter on each side so you get a nice colour blend if you're doing something like a background. So we're actually going to be putting saltwater taffy in the middle between abandoned coral and tattered rose. So uh, um, abandoned coral is a much darker pink so we'll start with this on the base here. Working round in circles and making sure that I've captured every part of the grain of the paper. Now I say the grain of the paper, even the smoothest paper has a slight grain to it. And if you don't go around in circles and you were to, for example, to just blend like so, or in one direction, you're not going to catch all the angles of that grain and you'll end up with some small white areas. So I'm just going to wipe and dry my mat and then go in with the saltwater taffy. So I've gone about a third of the way up with the abandoned coral and then the saltwater taffy in the middle. Good tip if you are putting your first colour down and you know you're going to be trying to blend it into a second colour, try to do some of the blending straight away by fading that colour out rather than doing a solid line. So you're already sort of doing half a job there. Then I'm going to go back over that blend line with the abandoned coral that's already on my brush, again working in small circles and look at that that's taken no effort at all to mix those two together so again give this a little wipe because i'm now going to be going in with a lighter color and ensure you always dry your mat once you've wiped it because any moisture is going to react with distress oxides if you're not sure what i mean by that if you're new to distress inks and oxides take a look at a video that i have on my channel which is comparing the difference between distress inks and distress oxides and it's also telling you all about those properties the things you can do with water 
with them because they are absolutely amazing the effects you can get so uh, but that does also mean that if we want nice smooth blending we don't want to have any water or dampness on our mat so then going into tattered rose so i'm just using my this is like my vinyl transfer tape when i use my things like my cricket so i'm putting that down at the bottom underneath my my um strip there and that's going to keep my strip still <laughs> get my words out get my strip still without me touching it and putting fingerprints on it right so this is an ever such a pale color in fact what i'm going to do so I'm actually going to switch up now if we take a look at this here's a little bit of a learning thing for you and it's something that I forgot to do before I started filming but rather than go away and do it and come back and you be none the wiser I'm going to tell you about it so at some point I think I've used this brush with inks now I've talked about this before in videos but in case you're new to the series I'll go over it again if like me whoops if like me you find you're trying to pick up your oxide you're putting it on and it's just not going on it's just staying in the brush and the brush feels a little bit stiff and just a little bit you can see you can if so if we compare the two you can kind of see the gaps more within here where they're clumping together a little i think i've used this at some point with some ink rather than sticking to just oxide so in this instance i'm going to take myself a new clean brush now what I will do when I finish this video is I will take my tattered rose brush and I will run that under some warm soapy water, give it a really good wash um, and then let it dry naturally and that should clean out any ink that's in there um, and bring it back to new. But obviously I'm not going to do that right now while I'm doing this blending. So you can see the difference that a new brush makes. So picking up the ink but also laying the ink down not just picking it up and soaking it up and keeping it in there so blending this well into the bottom because like i say it is a very pale color because it's pale i can afford to go quite heavily into the blend line there or the join line and then i'm going to take what's left on my brush from the saltwater taffy and lightly go along in circles starting where the solid color is and gently working my way down into the tattered rose. I'm not going to reapply any ink at this stage because it's such a strong color, the saltwater taffy compared to the tattered rose. There we go. So I think I'm happy there with the blend between those two as well. So there we have it, a beautiful tonal blend with saltwater taffy in the middle going from abandoned coral into tattered rose. So let's now look at a second colour combination. Now this one's fun, so it's not tonal at all, but this one is taking almost your four primary colours and taking pastel shades of those. So that'd be your red, yellow, green, I still class as a primary colour, but green and blue, and taking the most pastel shade I could find in the Distress Oxide range to create a lovely soft background. So again, starting with Saltwater Taffy, this is actually probably one of the brightest of the four, now the reason that I've gone for the pink first is because I'm thinking about the rainbow and I always do this when I'm thinking about how to mix my colours, which one's going to go in which order in a colour combination. So I think about the rainbow and that doesn't mean that I have to go from the red through to the orange, yellow, green, blue, purple in that order, but it does mean that I can work out which colours sit side by side nicely. So I know the red side, so the pink, will go nicely into sort of the cream, which is the yellow, because on the rainbow they sit quite nicely together. Now, for example, if I was to put the blue in between, they might well go nicely together, but if you think about the rainbow, it doesn't go red, blue, and then yellow. It goes red, yellow, green, blue. Okay, in that order. So I try to stick to that order because I know that those colours should blend nicely together there is within this sort of red or pink orangey color there's going to be a yellow within green there's going to be a yellow within blue there's going or within green there's going to be a blue so try to keep your matching that way does that make sense hopefully it does let me know in the comments if you don't understand uh, how i'm explaining that so next is antique linen now this one uh, i always used to reserve for going around the edges of paper for distressing paper things like that but just lately I've been using it as an actual background colour because it is so lovely on its own. 
it's a lovely soft cream got a hint of green in it i think as well just a tiny bit so there we go so again those two have worked really nicely together that would look stunning with a little splattering of some water then i'm going to go into iced spruce now this is a bit of a gray green so uh, and that's going to lead nicely into the blue then so i'm going to take again my transfer paper and just hold this still like so so putting down the solid color first because uh, i can really work that into the grain and then afterwards working on that blend line so don't try to do the blend line first until you've got your solid patch as such nicely down so then just going over that blend line with what was left on the antique linen and then i'm going to go straight into speckled egg i don't need to work too much at that join line so going into the blue there the pale blue at the end now i know that ice spruce and speckled egg work so beautifully together just like so there we go so we've got our four colors all blended really nicely together minimal effort and there we go now I did say that I'd like to see these colors with some water splattered over so we're going to do that and while that's just reacting and we see how that turns up don't forget to check out the distress oxide playlist that I'll put just here for you and this is going to show you all the other colors that we've worked through so far um, and if you love these videos please do subscribe so that you don't miss any I try to upload them as often as possible it won't be long before we work through all of them there we go